Can you make hospital grade sanitizer at home? Yes, you totally can. Today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to do that and I'm gonna give you a calculator to make it easier so you can use different percentage or different strength ingredients and still get a consistent result. In addition to that, we're also gonna talk about why you actually wanna do this, even though soap is more effective at killing the bear virus. Welcome to Stiller everyone, I'm Jesse, and normally this channel is all about chasing the craft of home distillation. We're taking a bit of a sideways step here today, and the reason for that is that once again, in this crazy, you know, global situation, home distilling is proving itself to be a, a awesome hobby in terms of being self-sustainable. So, soap, yes, using soap and washing your hands correctly uh, can and will, in fact, you know, kill the virus that we're facing at the moment with wonderful efficiency. Uh, I am not debating that. In fact, I am endorsing that fact. The problem is that it is not always practical to wash your hands. If you're one of the people stuck on the front lines of this, you know, even not in health, if you're delivering food to people, you can't carry soap and water with you in your back pocket. So the bear virus has also been shown to live on surfaces, to be active on surfaces for up to 72 hours, especially on stainless steel and plastic. Now, if you're getting things delivered to your house, if you're buying food, if you bring things into your house, even if you're in full quarantine, you know, obviously plastic is gonna be one of those things that comes into your house a lot. It actually gets worse than that. That's all they've been able to show lately. And if it is similar to other viruses in this family of virus, then it can actually potentially live up to nine days on plastic. It also just so happens that it is not practical to wash everything that comes in through the front door down with soap and water. It just, you know, that, that may not be the easiest thing to do. You can see that there is a need for sanitizer as well as soap. Soap works by dissolving the lipid bilayer and effectively rendering the virus inactive. Whereas alcohol, at the right percentage, sort of unfolds the proteins in the virus and then clumps them all back together. It's, it's denaturing, it's the same thing as what happens to an egg white when you cook it. And once they've denatured and all stuck together in a clump like that, you can't go back the other way so you're safe. You can't uncook an egg. So as long as we have the proper concentration of alcohol, definitely above 60, more ideally above 70% ABV, which is 120 proof or 140 proof, that denaturing process is gonna happen and it's gonna kill the virus. Actually, it's not gonna kill the virus because the virus was never technically alive. It's gonna render it inactive. Now there are a lot of people, professionals included, saying that you should not make sanitizer at home for a couple of reasons. Number one is that people use alcohol that's not strong enough and make something that's completely and utterly ineffective. Standard alcohol like, you know, vodka you get off the shelf is only 40% ABV and literally straight by itself, it's not 60, right? They also say that these uh, ingredients, especially the alcohol and the hydrogen peroxide can be dangerous by themselves. I will give them that, we need to be careful. But uh, at the end of the day, they're essentially saying that people are too stupid to work it out and do it properly. And that, that I have a problem with. This is, as home distillers, we're built for this. This is what we're good at. This is what we're gonna do. But before we get stuck into it, you need to make me a couple of promises. One is that if you are gonna do this, do it properly and follow the World Health Organization guidelines to making the stuff that actually freaking works. That's what this video is following and what the calculator I'm going to give you is following as well. Skip the unwanted crap that people love to put into these things. No, I'm not gonna put another ingredient into this stuff for a sexy YouTube title or to make me look like I've got something different or better. If it doesn't need to be in there, don't put it in there. And if you have to, yes, I've, I've given the ability for you to do this in the calculator. If you have to do it, make sure you understand the ingredients that you're putting into it, especially allergies and label it so people know what's in it. And lastly, you need to follow the instructions and mix things carefully. Cool, let's get stuck in. Let's fire up the calculator. This is where you can find the calculator for yourself. There's a link down below as well, obviously. So, the first thing you want to do is choose whether or not you are using metric or imperial. Sorry guys, at the time of recording this video, that is not actually available at the moment. Let me know in the comments if you need it, <laughs> and uh, I'll get onto that as soon as I can. So, put the size of the batch that you want to make. The end volume you can pick the final ABV of the solution you're making. This is what matters. This is what we're aiming for. 
This is why this calculator exists. It has to be at least 60%, don't go lower than that, ideally 75, 80%. So, screw it, we're gonna max it out at 80%. Uh, next, we decide whether or not we wanna put anything else in it. No, no we do not. And our hydrogen peroxide is at 20%. It's gonna give you a notification to say, be careful with this stuff because hydrogen peroxide will mess you up. It really will, so be careful with it. Do not get it on your skin, and your, especially in your eyes, anything like that. Uh, and the alcohol I am using today is 92%. That is the ingredient, the, um, the, the alcohol you found to use. And if you pick an alcohol that is too low ABV, it's gonna tell you you can't make this stuff. The instructions are first because you should read them. Read them, check them out, okay? So now we know exactly what we need and the volumes we need, we can get stuck into putting these things together. Like we said earlier, hydrogen peroxide is no joke. Hand protection, eye protection, if you don't have proper eye protection, at least sunglasses is a damn good idea. So first we're going to measure out the ethanol and put it into a mixing container. Next we measure our distilled or boiled and then cooled water. Note guys, if you don't have equipment like this, that's fine. Just something that is going to measure accurately and you can stir it. Next comes the hydrogen peroxide. Remember, be careful with this stuff and make sure you add it after the water, add it slowly. I'm measuring this with a small syringe, the type that you would uh, give children medication with. You know what, as soon as I'm done with this syringe, I'm gonna dispose of it safely, just to make sure. Next up is the glycerol or glycerin. Uh, once again, I'm measuring this with a small syringe and giving it a damn good stir. I would suggest washing out a spray bottle really well, stripping the labels off it and putting your own label on this bottle so no one ever gets confused as to what's inside it. It's important that it's an airtight bottle because this is high ABV and it will evaporate super quickly. So have it in a bottle that's uh, relatively airtight for dispensing. And if you've got more, you know, I've made twice this much, have it in an airtight bottle that you can store somewhere else and label this as well. You don't want to get it mixed up with something you're gonna drink for heaven's sake. It is just like the sanitary process for brewing, for distilling, for all of that stuff. You can't sanitize what isn't clean so if you've got a greasy surface if you've got dirty greasy hands you know using this stuff isn't going to do a damn thing um, if your hands aren't relatively clean already is this stuff effective hell yes it is i trust the world health organization to do their jobs properly uh, and they wouldn't be recommending this stuff if it's not effective uh, is this truly hospital grade in normal times, I'm not sure, maybe not, but I know of multiple places uh, supplying their local hospitals with exactly this recipe because they can't get enough of the damn stuff right now. So there you have it guys, hand sanitizer, hand rub, whatever you want to call it uh, that you can make at home that will actually work. So if you've decided that perhaps you might be interested in home distilling because it'll help you get prepped for a certain situation that may come up, help you be a little bit more self-sustainable or so on and so forth, I've got a video coming out about just that soon. But in the meantime, have a look around the channel, figure out if this is something that you might be into. And if it is, make sure you subscribe. All right, I'm out of here. Thanks a bunch, team. See ya.